to make your first thousand dollars as a language freelancer coming up hello and welcome back to the freelance verse thanks for coming back to the channel once again today it couldn't be more uh, fresh off the batch actually i uh, Record this at 3 p.m. and it goes out at 6 p.m. So it's almost live. Uh, I just spent two weeks in Switzerland and I'm very exhausted but also determined to get this out and not miss an upload. As you can see by the title today, I want to talk to you about how to make your first $1,000 as a language freelancer. I feel like that first $1,000 is a very important threshold. Uh, it can create a mentality shift, right? Once you actually manage to generate $1,000 on your own, just out of thin air basically, because you're starting from, from scratch, right? It can create a nice dynamic because your first time, for the first time, maybe you feel like you're good enough. You, you realize, okay, I can actually make a living with this, right? This is not just a joke that I'm trying to do. Maybe people don't believe in what you want to do with your, with your career. And uh, reaching $1,000 revenue is a nice, like, uh, proof that you can do it and it can really motivate you to, to keep on going. So I think it's very important to get there as quickly as possible. Now, if you frequent YouTube like I do, uh, then you have probably or most likely come across these videos with titles similar to this one, right? Uh, there are countless videos that tell you basically uh, that millions are at your fingertips and uh, it's never been easier to make millions on YouTube or on, on, on the internet with the digital, digital economy. Just simply uh, use ChatGPT to write a book, sell the book. Uh, it doesn't have to be good content. Just do it. Just write as many books as you can. Do drop shipping, uh, do Amazon FBA and some crypto trading and you will be fine. Now, of course, this is a bit, uh, you can you can hear the sarcasm, right? I've seen many of these videos and I always have to, have to smile because somehow people are still really drawn into this whole hustle culture of just creating any kind of money without any consequences and and uh, ethics but if that's what you expect from this video it's not going to be that there are plenty of other channels that do this kind of stuff uh, feel free to go there uh, this video is specifically targeted for people who are uh, language professionals i'm specifically saying language professionals and not translators because that's really what you are right you don't need to put yourself into a box and just call yourself translator because with a free with a, as a freelancer as a language freelancer you have all the opportunities that, that you could possibly find uh, that there are and you can also find maybe new ones uh, online without limiting you to just one simple sales funnel so yes, this video is a realistic approach for language freelancers how to reach their first $1,000 revenue. So when you register as a freelancer, I always recommend people to keep it as vague as possible, to do something with languages or communications, you know, when you register, uh, so that you can then uh, do things like this YouTube channel, for example, right? Or, or I can teach, I can subtitle, I can translate, I can write. I don't need to have different uh, registrations for that because I'm just a language freelancer and I do all these things in one registration. It's a very good tip. Don't, don't put yourself too much in a box. Maybe I came off a bit too harsh about these hustle maniac uh, channels. They, they do have one thing very correct, which is actually true, that it has never been easy, easier to make money online. Uh, the digital economy created this now thriving uh, online business, right? There are, there are countless ways that you can generate a legit business online. A sustainable one an ethical one and not just uh, by ripping other people's content off and selling them uh, to other people yes this happened to me and uh, i know you're watching the person i know you're there so you know i'm talking about you we had kind of a not a legal dispute but i had to uh, use some strong words because that's not how it works right you can't just rip people's people off and think uh, without even changing the content just trying to monetize it so um be creative, find your own ways to do it. This video is hopefully giving you some inspiration to do that. So all the tools that you need to succeed are basically available to you, right? Uh, summer is around the corner, at least in this hemisphere, right? Summer or winter, depending on where you are. Uh, so I want to challenge you with this video. If you're watching this, maybe you just finished university, maybe you are, are reskilling yourself to become a freelancer. Um, what other people could watch is just people w are interested in becoming a translator working from home but you're not sure when and how to start so here's my challenge follow the things I'm gonna outline in this video in July and August 
when you're watching this or in any other two following months if you watch it later and i think the chances that you make your first thousand dollars revenue by the end of these two months are very high of course also report back to me after these two months and write it in the comments i'm very curious if it actually worked as always disclaimer this only works for people who are taking this seriously who are uh, who want to build a sustainable business and not for people who use this as a side gig as a just make some money online on the site you can do that but then this video is not for you because it requires a lot of work uh, and you wouldn't do that just for a side gig, I feel like. All right, the first point I want to mention has to do with copywriting, specifically writing blog posts and newsletters. Blogs and newsletters are proven to increase a company's ROI significantly. So you could argue that any brand, any company that does not have a blog and not have a newsletter to reach out to clients, or not a blog, but any creative outlet, or outlet maybe also a YouTube channel, etc., is missing out on potential uh, revenue, right? So this need is something you can use as a freelancer. That's where you can come in and, you know, reach them unprompted in a way that you can actually benefit them and not annoy them as most cold emails do. From a writing point of view, blog posts or articles are relatively easy to write, especially if you are writing in a sector that you're interested in or already have knowledge in. So what I would do and what I challenge you to do over the next two months is assess your specializations. Think of areas that you know a lot in more than the majority of the people. Uh, I've also done this before this approach and it has worked for me uh, look up brands that are working and are active in this sector check out their websites check out their socials see if they have already blog posts if they do uh, check their writing style check how they write what topics they write about you can use that to emulate it later uh, if they don't have it yet that's a big opportunity for you as well right so what I want you to do afterwards is come up with three headlines of, of blog posts, of articles that are uh, relevant for this specific brand, right? You don't need to actually write the articles yet, just three headlines that are thought-provoking, kind of inspiring, interesting. Uh, you can use LLMs, like large language models like ChatGPT for things like this. They are great to come up with, with uh, headings, with article ideas to give you inspiration. Uh, you can, for example, prompt uh, something like, I really want to write a blog post article for a ski brand about the uh, new upcoming trends this winter. This and this and this is, is in planning. Please give me a nice uh, catchy heading for that. Uh, and if you have three compelling headings, that's how you approach the company. So I would create a nice and welcoming cover email mentioning that you've seen their blogs if they have and you really uh, find it engaging and you would like to collaborate on them. Uh, if they don't have a blog post, you could actually argue with the ROI, right? That it's very beneficial if they have a blog post, if they regularly uh, post things on LinkedIn, on their website for SEO purposes, but also for people finding them for, for uh, revenue generate, generation. You can tell them, look, I have these three articles. Here are the, the titles. If they pique your interest, please let me know which one you would like to look, look into and possibly uh, purchase. If they come back to you and they say, oh, I really like this heading, uh, I really like this article, the number one, uh, could you please send it to me? We are interested in buying it. Uh, and that's, you can still write it then, right? You don't actually need to write the other two as well. So just the ones that are interested in, you can then write a perfectly polished, uh, good blog post and send it to them. Blog posts can generate quite some revenue. It really depends on the length and the reading potential, of course. But if you write a, a general, like, uh, blog post that isn't read by millions of people it's just a normal one uh, people would generally charge between three and seven hundred dollars per blog post you often see uh, retainer uh, arrangements between writers and companies they maybe pay you I don't know fifteen hundred dollars to write two or three blog posts a month that's a nice stable income which is always good for freelancers if you can plan ahead uh, so if you if you can get into a retainer somehow that's always beneficial so imagine if you can establish a long-term relationship with a client and making a thousand dollars a month is relatively easily easy with, with blog posts and it's enjoyable. I really like writing them. So definitely a, a, a nice way to go that you don't need that much uh, experience in as well. Always important when you start out. Now moving on, I want to talk about community building. One of the strongest ways to monetize a brand, in my opinion, is a community. Uh, of course, this doesn't happen within two months, right? Uh, for me to build this, this freelance verse channel and this community, it took one year of consistent uploads to monetize the channel and another year to find brands to collaborate with, to actually make it sustainable in a financial way as well. Um, 
so you will not uh, reach that in the next two months that's perfectly fine but if you use community building as a way to network then after the two months you will have first of all a network and you will also have done the part the first two months of your community right so it's it's kind of a way to start both at the same time both community building and networking I do believe that every translator, every language professional should have some kind of creative outlet and marketing tool. It doesn't need to be YouTube like I do, but it can be LinkedIn, it can be blog posts, uh, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Just you need to be visible. You need to let people know that you exist. It's a lot of work, so you need to also enjoy it if you want to do it. But it can really uh, generate a lot if you if you stay if you stay relevant, if you put yourself out there. But for this challenge, when it comes to networking, I want you to do the following. I want you to reach out to one language professional on LinkedIn every day in July that works in your language pair. So let's say you're working in English Greek. So every day in July, you reach out to an English Greek translator that you find on LinkedIn. Uh, note it down in an Excel sheet, write down their names, their emails, whatever you can find, their website, uh, report if they answer to you, what is the next step, etc. You can offer them a kind of a revenue split, for example. You can tell them you're, you're looking to gain experience in the, in the industry and you would really like to collaborate with them. If they have, I mean, if they are like me, they probably have a lot of work to do and sometimes too much and I hate saying no to my clients. So if I can give my, my, my tasks to someone that I trust and they, I give them 50% of the revenue, I read, I proofread the, their translation, I keep the other 50%. That's a great idea for me because then I can still make 50% while helping someone else and while not saying no to my client, right? I'm not saying this will work every time, not at all, but if you reach out to one person a day in July, you will have something like 30 connections, which is a great network. Uh, you will have learned a lot of things about the industry. You know how to reach out to people, you know how to talk to people. And also, if you reach out to 30 professionals in a month, you will definitely find at least three interesting leads to potential clients, potential collaborations with them. Uh, I think a 10% uh, success rate would be very nice in that. Um, maybe it sounds too low for you, but imagine like it's three very nice lead generations you, you didn't have before, right? So sometimes you need to be happy with 10% success rate, which is good, by the way, it can be much lower. But I'm thinking if you go right to the source, LinkedIn is the best source for that. And uh, three leads out of 30, I think, uh, is possible and would be very nice. Another challenge for July, while you're at it already, by the way, I would, I would suggest you put away one hour per day in July for these two things, for the networking and for this next part that I'm telling you. I want you to do a translation every day. Is it YouTube subtitles of your favorite creator, blog posts, articles you see online? Uh, you can volunteer for a charity, uh, for example, uh, even paid ones if you find it. I mean, that would be ideal, but just whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Just work on your tr translation and your writing skills every day in July. This does give you three things. It, first of all, it gives you practice. You become much better in translation and research as well which is one of the major skills. It gives you a portfolio of roughly 30 translations that you didn't have before, and you can definitely work with that if you have a nice portfolio, right? Portfolio doesn't need to be paid translations. I tell this many times on the channel. The portfolio is things you translate. It doesn't matter whether you're pay paid or not. And the third thing it can give you is it can give you an idea of what you want to specialize in. Because if you do a translation every day in July, it can guarantee you will find some things that are nice and enjoyable and some that are not at all. Because, uh, yeah, you should do various different topics, by the way. And then you kind of get an idea of what you're good at, what you're less good at. And then you maybe find your future specialization in this month would be a nice added benefit. After having done these two things for one hour each day in July, you have the whole August to find translation jobs with this new network, with this new portfolio. Uh, I made a video all about finding translation jobs and click here if you're interested. You should check it out if you haven't yet. I'm not gonna go into detail of that again because it's all there um, and there's only so much I can say about finding translation jobs. So definitely go through this video. And last but not least, I want you to get stuck into transcribing. Transcribing is a task that can be very tedious for many people. That's why they, it's often outsourced. Uh, me personally, I find it quite enjoyable. I learn a lot when I transcribe videos and it is rather easy without experience. It's not that hard to do, right? Uh, and it can fill the non-paying gaps in a working day when you're starting out and you don't uh, have 
a full day planned yet, then you can do some transcription jobs on the side, which is a great way to up the revenue while not just waiting for work, basically. The three main platforms that people use are Three Play Media, Go Transcripts, and Ref. Uh, I've used all of three, all of these three in the beginning. I don't really want to promote Ref because some people really work for nothing on there, and I don't support that at all. But the other two I can recommend. Um, if you really get stuck into these and spend, let's say, I don't know, like eight hours a week on that, uh, I think you can probably get around 120, 150 dollars a week. Now, don't get me wrong, I know this is not rates that we want to work at, right? This is for the beginning, this is to reach the challenge of $1,000 revenue for the first time. Um, and as I said, once you reach that threshold, you can continue building your company. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long run, right? You will, you will have to grow, you will have to scale up, and scaling will be much easier than starting. So in the beginning, why not do something like this? So to recap, if you can manage to sell one or two blog posts in these two months, you can spend one hour in July on networking and, and building a portfolio. And you can find two to three translation jobs in August, while also st get stuck in with, with transcription, maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 hours in these two months. Then by my calculations, you should be able to reach $1,000 by the end of August. That's when you can really focus on your career. That's when you get the confidence boost. You can put your, all your eggs into one basket and go into language freelancing full time. Uh, that's what I did. Once I reached, for me, it was 1,500 and I reached 1,500 uh, euros per month. I, felt, I felt like, yeah, I can do this. And I went full on into it. and. Uh, haven't looked back ever since and I think if you do this challenge over the summer which is a great time I don't know if I mentioned it already summer is the time when other co and other freelancers are missing right because they go on holiday so that's when you can sweep in and take the job so if you're available in the summer uh, summer and, cr and Christmas times are the best times to take to take these like uh, holiday replacement jobs and then once you're in the system you're in so good luck on your future business let me know how it goes in the comments and i see you next monday with the last video of the season see you then bye bye